Welcome back. In our second segment this week, we're going to be discussing the dietary guidelines and the USDA food patterns. So to start, what are the dietary guidelines? This document is jointly developed by Health and Human Services and the USDA, or the United States Department of Agriculture, and it is updated every five years. So actually, this is a good time to be talking about the dietary guidelines because the 2015 dietary guidelines are actually in process of being um, updated right now. So this document provides science-based advice about healthy eating and physical activity, and it provides recommendations for all Americans over the age of two. And again, these recommendations are intended for healthy people, similar to the dietary reference intake. The goals of the dietary guidelines are to promote health and reduce the risk of chronic disease. So we want to prevent or reduce the risk of things like obesity or diabetes, promote achievement and maintenance of a healthy body weight. So again, preventing obesity or preventing weight gain over time that may lead to the development of overweight and obesity. And the dietary guidelines also work to promote consumption of a diet of nutrient-dense foods and beverages. And we'll talk about what nutrient-dense means um, in a couple of slides. So the most recent dietary guidelines came out in 2010, 2010 and again, the 2015 guidelines are being um, updated right now. And there are four major topic areas, and you can read more about these in Table 2.1 in your book. But the four major areas are to balance calories to manage weight, increase intakes of certain nutrient-dense foods, reduce intakes of certain foods and food components, and build a healthy eating pattern. So let's talk about each one of these focus areas in more detail. So the first one is to balance calories to manage weight. Um, really, we want to help people attain a healthy weight and, and prevent weight gain over time. So the key messages here are to enjoy food but eat less and to avoid oversized portions. So many of us have portion distortion. And portions have increased dramatically over the years. And what we tend to eat is usually several, several servings. Um, so a portion is what you eat, whereas a serving is what is recommended. So a lot of us have portion distortion where we eat much more than we need to or um, more that's recommended. So we want people to enjoy their food. Um, we don't want people to be have this negative connotation with food or give up food they love. So enjoy what you love, just watch your portion sizes. The next area is reduced intakes of certain foods and food components. So these are the food components that um, we want to limit or reduce in our diet. So sodium is a big one. Um, limit saturated fat intake to less than 10% of daily calories. Consume less than 300 milligrams of cholesterol. Limit trans fat, solid fat, added sugar, and refined grain intakes, and consume alcohol in moderation. So all of these, um, the recommendation is to reduce because high intakes can have negative impact on health. And again, one of the goals of the dietary guidelines is to prevent um, chronic diseases. So to help prevent chronic diseases, there are certain food components or foods that we can increase. So um, these are very food-based, so we want to make half of our plate fruits and vegetables, make at least half of our grains whole grains, increase our intake of fat-free or low-fat dairy products, choose a variety of lean protein sources, and choose foods with more potassium, fiber, calcium, and vitamin D. So these four nutrients, potassium, fiber, calcium, and vitamin D, are often lacking in our diet. So these have been identified as nutrients of concern by the Dietary Guidelines Committee in 2010. So most of us are not consuming enough of these, and they really are important for health. Um, and we'll learn more about all of these as we go throughout the semester, but just know that these are the nutrients of concern. Building healthy eating patterns is the fourth um, major topic area of the Dietary Guidelines. So the recommendation is to select an eating plan that meets nutrient needs at an appropriate calorie level. So everyone has a different calorie level, and nutrient needs are different, as we know from what we learned about in the DRI, that they differ by gender and age group and life stage. Um, the food pattern or your healthy eating pattern should account for all foods and beverages consumed and assess how they fit within a total healthy eating plan. So a piece of chocolate cake, how does that fit in versus maybe 
an apple or a banana or peanut butter or avocados and nuts. So thinking about how everything fits in. And then follow food safety guidelines to minimize the risk of food plant illness. So there are a lot of great resources out there, especially check out the Dietary Guidelines website. Um, the link is provided in the course resources, but there are a lot of great, great um, handouts, tips for um, food safety. So how does the U.S. diet actually compare to the guidelines? Well, we're not doing very well. So we need to increase our intake of all of these um, foods and components at the top because we're well below the goal, whereas things like solid fats and added sugars, refined grains, sodium and saturated fat were consuming well above the limit. And then this next slide just shows the same, the same concept as what was um, illustrated in the graph, just in word form. So we need to eat more fruits and vegetables, fish and other seafood or lean protein, more whole grains, more fat-free or low-fat milk and milk products, and eat fewer um, refined grains, solid fats, and added sugars, also referred to as sofas, and salt. So the USDA food pattern can be used to um, achieve a healthy diet. So a food group plan can help, help people achieve goals, so whether that may be a nutrient goal, a weight goal, whatever goal an individual has. Um, the food plan specified portions, so how much um, should be consumed, and foods are sorted by nutrient content. Um, by following these food patterns, um, you can achieve adequacy, balance, and variety in your diet. So um, definitely make sure to check out the figure in your book that goes through all the different different um, food groups. So this is going to be figure Q5. Um, we're going to go through these groups very briefly, very brief overview because there's a lot of information in the book, but um, this figure sh will show you the major nutrients of each food group, the serving size, and then sort of the, the selected consumer message for that group. So the first group is fruits. Um, I'll let you um, read more about fruits, but we can see the serving size, um, what fruits contribute to the diet, our, our um, selected message and great sources here, and which ones we should work to learn. Vegetables I want to spend a little bit more time on because different colors of vegetables provide different nutrients. So nutrients are actually divided into several subgroups. So our dark green vegetables, red and orange vegetables, legumes, starchy, and then other vegetables. So the key with vegetables is you want to consume a variety, um, not only within a day, but definitely across a week's time. So again, each color is going to provide different nutrients, so you don't want to always eat um, carrots. You know, on another day we want to have make sure we have some broccoli in there or some black beans. So variety is key. For grains, um, grains also differ quite a bit by nutrient content. So refined grains tend to lack fiber and other nutrients. They may be they may be enriched with some um, to have some other vitamins and minerals added back in, but they tend to lack fiber. So this is why we want to choose whole grains, which usually are high in fiber or a better source of fiber, and work to make half of our grains whole um, each day. With protein, fat content can vary among protein sources. So like vegetables, protein foods are also broken down into subgroups. So seafood, meats, poultry, eggs, nuts, seeds, and soy products. Meats tend to be a little bit higher in saturated fat, and saturated is known as our bad fat. So you don't want to cut, you don't have to cut meat completely out of your diet. Just make sure that you are choosing, again, a variety of protein foods from these different subgroups. And then milk and milk products. I do want to mention that while the recommendation is for fat-free and low-fat choices, if you will only, if the only way that you're going to consume these products is by um, consuming whole milk or 2%, by all means, choose, make that choice. Um, milk provides a lot of other nutrients, as we can see here, including calcium and vitamin D, um, which are lacking in the diet, as we know. So if, if you, um, if the recommendation of fat free means that you're not going to drink it, it's probably more harmful to not drink it than to go ahead and drink your whole milk. So the choice is yours, but um, milk and milk products do provide important nutrients for our diet. 
And then oils are not really a food group, but they do contribute vitamin E and essential fatty acids, so they are important. So um, solid fats we want to limit in our diet, like we've talked about in the previous guidelines, and really work to include more um, liquid fats. All right, so our last concept here, um, we want to choose nutrient-dense foods within our food patterns. So nutrient density is a measure of nutrients provided per calorie of food. So a nutrient-dense food would be one that provides vitamins, minerals, and other beneficial substances with relatively few calories. So something like an apple would be very nutrient-dense, or a baked potato would be nutrient-dense. However, it's very easy to make a nutrient-dense food no longer nutrient-dense. So if I have a baked potato and I load it up with sour cream and bacon and cheese, my potato is no longer a great nutrient-dense food. It has now has some solid fat on it as well as, as extra energy. The other um, definition to know here is empty calorie. So these are calories from solid fats and or added sugars. That they provide a lot of energy or a lot of calories, but they provide relatively few or no nutrients. So we want to limit empty calories or watch the amount of empty calories in our diet. Discretionary calories um, is where you can really use some of those empty calories. So if you think of the context of all of your calories you have in a day, and then this amount is what you use to meet your nutrient needs, and then you still have a little bit left over before to meet your total calorie needs, these discretionary calories can really be used wherever you want. So if you want to use your discretionary calories to have that piece of chocolate cake, do that. It's really your choice of how you want to fill that calorie void. It's usually best to choose nutrient-dense foods to fill this void, but really these are discretionary, so um, the important thing is that you meet your total energy needs. You can also check out um, Choose My Plate. So this, the Choose My Plate has replaced um, my pyramid. Which was, so my plate came out with the 2010 dietary guidelines replacing my pyramid. Again, we can see our guidelines reinforced here, making half our plate fruits and vegetables, low fat, fat free dairy, half our grain whole, half of our grains whole, and choosing lean protein sources. So make sure to check out that, res um, the website because there are a lot of great resources on this website. Last concept. There's great flexibility of these food patterns. So they may seem a little bit rigid, but they really do allow for flexibility and substitution. So it allows for personal preferences. So if you don't like tofu, maybe you like beans, and that's a non-meat source you can try. Or if you don't like apples, but you like bananas. Or you don't like um, hamburger, but you really like ham. You know, this allows for substitution, allows for mixed dishes, it allows for national and cultural foods and for vegetarians. So the food patterns work for everybody. Um, so make it work for you. And another thing I want to point out with the food patterns is that you don't have to give up the foods that you love. So include those foods you love, be flexible, um, follow these guidelines, um, and we'll talk more about how to make um, and how to achieve a healthy diet.